Chapter 10. Emperor Ming is holding his daughter, Princess Aura, as a hostage in his war against Prince Baron, Flash Gordon, and Dr. Zarkov. Leaving the land of the dead and with Torch, Sonia, and Thong prisoners, Flash and his friends accompany Baron in his ship to Ming's palace in a daring attempt to rescue the princess. Through the cooperation of Captain Sudan of Ming's guard, they enter the tunnels beneath the palace. But they are attacked by a party of Ming's guards who sound an alarm and... What has happened? Their presence has been discovered. What can we do? Nothing but hope for the best. I still may be... What's the meaning of this alarm? I do not know, Your Majesty. It startled me. It's your duty to find out. Good. They're all there. All except Dale Arden. Caught like rats in a trap. Open the flood control valve. But Your Majesty, you wanted them captured alive. Or are you going to obey? Tell Princess Aura about this interesting event. Hey. There's still a chance to save them. We must go divert the water away from the bottomless pit, down to the lower sluice gate into the ravine. That's done it. They were swept out through the side tunnel. Now they at least have a chance for their lives. Close it quickly. If Ming hears of this, we may meet a horrible death. We've got to get out of here before Ming discovers this Travis failed ship is beyond that ridge. Terry broke up. Princess Aura, you didn't find her. No, we failed. Zarkov needs attention right away. Ronald, we've got to get away from here as quickly and quietly as we can. Ming doesn't know we're escaping. Hurry! Clever device, Kong. But it'll be of no further use to you. Your friends, Flash Garden and Dr. Zarkov, were killed in an attempted attack upon my castle. And Baron, my husband. It is unfortunate that your husband chose to join the cause of my enemies. It is also unfortunate that I had to die before ridding the universe of your evil presence and placing the Princess Aura upon the throne. My daughter is no longer a princess. She is merely a prisoner of war. Do you hope to save your life for this bravado? No, me. I only hope to get close enough to put my hands on your throat! Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. <coughs> Too bad. Arm was a clever scientist. Take him away. Someone calling on Carm's radio. My husband! He's calling Carm. Can you imitate Carm's voice? I can try, Your Majesty. Carm, are you alone? Talk to Oh, they're alive. They're alive. Take her to the women's quarters. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Carm. They failed to find my radio phone. I thought you and your people were drowned in the flooded cavern. Your parents converted the flood waters through a side tunnel into the ravine. 
That miracle was my daughter. A very clever girl, but she shall be punished. Calm. Let us know when Ming means to attack, and in what manner. Ask him about Princess Aura. The Princess Aura is safe and well. The Emperor believes you were all destroyed by the flood. He contemplates no other attack upon our body at present. I will know and give you plenty of warning if danger threatens. That's good news, Baron. It gives you time to call in your patrols and prepare the ships for defense. For attack, rather. I mean to take Princess Aura out of Ming's hands at any cost. I'll tell Flash. He and Dale are down at the cell. Well, he'd better come clean, Torch. How many ships has Ming got ready for immediate action? Just why should I tell you anything? Prince Baron would give a good deal for aid in bringing the princess home safely. Why not get help from your friend Calm? He's on the ground. It's too bad Tong escaped. He'd have talked. How did that happen? Well, he pretended to be wounded worse than he was. The guards didn't watch him. We'll try Sonia. Maybe she'll think more of her neck. Sonia, we're going to give you a chance for your life. We want you to Send her away, Earth Man. You and I understand each other. Oh, I do. Release me, Flash Garden, and I'll tell you everything. <laughs> oh, no. You're going to have to talk first. Then I'll see what I can do about getting you out. Remember, the Prince Baron's prisoner, not mine. Prince Baron, bah. He's as good as putty in your hands and will do anything you bid him. Set me free and I'll show you how to overthrow both Prince Baron and Emperor Ming. Then you and I, Earthman, will rule the universe. Flash. What is it, Roka? Dr. Zarkov wants to see you. He's been talking with Karm by radio, and he says there's no danger of an attack by Ming for some time. Oh, good. Thank you, Roka. Better watch that woman. She'll try to trick you. Thank you, sir. She's already tried. all this about a message from Carm. He said that... Now, wait a minute, Sarkoff. I want his exact words. How did he begin? Exact words? I don't know. Roker talked to him first. He made the connection, then handed me the radio. Well, Roker, he said, this is Carm. I'm alone in the laboratory. And it wasn't Carm who was speaking. Not Carm! You mean he said Princess Aura was safe. It couldn't have been Carm. You see, we'd arranged code words to avoid that sort of trick. If it had been Carm, he would have begun with the words, listen carefully. But it was Carm's voice. He said that Ming believed us dead. Dead. And he knows we're alive. No doubt he's planning for immediate attack after sending that fake message of reassurance. Then I must instruct the outer patrol to be on the alert. Yes, Gordon. I have 
reason to believe that Ming plans to attack at once. Warn all ships to be on the alert. Tell them to report immediately. Any spaceship, whatever mark. The order will go out immediately, sir. Thank you. Calling all spaceships. Calling all spaceships. General order number 83. General order number 83. <laughs> Watch that door. Calling Emperor Ming. Calling the palace of Emperor Ming. This is Captain Torch speaking. I've got momentary control of Barron's radio room. What are your orders, sire? I will send gas bombers to attack Barron's palace at once. See if you can call in Barron's patrol ships, so there will be no warning of the attack. Shall be done, sire. Watch that door closely while I call in Barrett's patrols. Calling all patrols. These are general orders from Prince Baron. All ships that are committed once and ground for repairs. Ship number five, acknowledging general order from Prince Baron. We're heading in at once. How long will it take Ming's fleet to get here? Not long. If I can clear the patrols out of their way. Sonia's cell. Yes. I'd just like to get my hands on it. Well, she's gone. Something's happened to the guard. He's dead. Killed by a ray gun. Get Flash and call the guards. I'll send an alarm from the radio room. What are you doing? I'm going to break communication with Baron's ships, so they can't countermand my orders. And you think Ming intends to attack? I'm so sure of it that I took the liberty of broadcasting an order to your patrol ship, Your Highness. Torch and Sony have escaped. Escaped? Impossible. Scatter and search. This little job will prevent anyone from rescinding the order to call in the patrols. Why, you little... Door, Gordon, I'll pull the trigger. Move, quick! Don't let him get away, Flash. He's calling the patrol. Who means about to attack? Hold the alarm, quickly! Chance torch can blast you. Please. Never mind. Follow him, but don't crowd them. He'll kill Dale. I'll hit them off from the outside. Take 
can't see us, we'll be killed with the rest. Hurry, look out! Movie Camera Sparkles, welcome back to Starlight Monster Movie Madness. Sparkles Movie Camera. Ladies and gentlemen, monster movie maniacs, and retro sci-fi fans alike, you just watched Chapter 10 of Flash Gordon. Wasn't that thrilling? The spacefaring action keeps us on the edge of our seats as we journey closer to the climactic showdown in this iconic sci-fi serial. But now, we're shifting gears from the stars to the strange as we dive into tonight's feature— the Woman Eater, 1958. This quirky horror gem promises jungle adventures, mad science, and, of course, a mysterious man-eating tree. It's a campy, creepy classic you don't want to miss. And don't go anywhere during the break, because we'll be chatting about something a little different, Christmas movies and gift ideas. Whether you're a fan of festive flicks or looking for that perfect present, we got you covered as the holiday season is just around the corner. So grab your snacks, settle in, and get ready to enjoy the woman eater. Herb test tube. Stay tuned. There's more monster madness to come. Clapperboard. Chapter 11. Torch and Sonia, Ming's agents, confined in prison cells in Baron's Palace, escape to the radio room, overpower the operator, and communicate with Ming. Ming instructs Torch to send out a false order grounding Baron's spaceship in order to clear the way for the Ming bombers and to then destroy the radio to prevent Baron countermanding the order. Dale overhears the order and is captured by Torch and Sonia, who flee with her to the roof of the palace. Flash pursues and corners them and is battling with Torch when Ming's bombers...
beaten, Your Highness. Two of the ships shot down and the others driven off. Never mind that. And there are no reports on Flash and Dale. The search of the castle and grounds is continuing. Flash! Thank heaven you're safe. Dale and Ronald are gone. Have you seen them? Tosh here had Dale prisoner when I grabbed him. If anything has happened to her... You'd better not, Gordon. One of Ming's ships landed while we were in the moat. If Ming has her, you might need me as hostage. Broca, lock him up. Operator, see if you can contact the palace. Wait a moment. If he is Dale and Ronald prisoner, perhaps he'll make the first move. Welcome, Thong and Lady Sonia. I understand you bring us prisoners of importance. Thank you, Your Majesty. Dale Arden and Captain Ronald have been confined in separate apartments and await Your Majesty's pleasure. Please leave us now. I have things to say to these two alone. I am ill-served, it seems. Sire. Two of my best ships and crews destroyed. Captain Torch, my ablest soldier and counselor, you have left in the hands of my enemies. Your Majesty has many ships and soldiers, but there's only one Dale Arden. No doubt Prince Baron would be glad to exchange Captain Torch for her. What do you mean? Your captain or your bride, sire? Bring Dale Arden to me at once. <laughs> No trace of any of them. But we verified the report that one of Ming's ships did actually land at the castle during the gas raid. That settles it. I'm going after Ming. I'll go with you. Will your highness caution our guard to watch the prisoner torch very closely? The Empress Palace calling. If Ming will speak to his servant, Prince Baron, over the televisor. <laughs> Baron will speak to Ming, the tyrant. Uh, Baron, I see you have your allies with you. That makes it simpler. One of my ships just brought in a couple of prisoners, Dale Arden and a Captain Rana. Let me talk to him. Listen, Ming. If you harm Dale Arden, I'll come there and kill you with my bare hands. I am not interested or disturbed by the ravings of a madman. Dale has not been harmed. She will tell you so herself. Step here, my child. Flash. Get me out of here. Get me out. Dale. Dale, listen to me. Don't be afraid. We'll get you out somehow. And now, if I may speak to Dr. Zarkov. I may exchange this young lady for my Captain Torch. And what terms do you propose to make me? Not even exchange. Or better than that. I'll toss in Captain Ronald, who is of no importance to me. It's a trick. He'll lay a trap for us. And how do you propose to make the exchange? As your friend Flash is suspicious, I will agree to any arrangements you make. But you must decide now. I'll not renew the offer. Oh, agree, Doctor. Flash, get me out of here. Get me out. He can't trick us if we arrange the terms. In any event, we have no choice. All right, all right, make a deal, make a deal. We will make the exchange on the following terms. Flash Gordon and I will bring Captain Torch. Prepare a ship at once. Shall be done, sire. Sanja, be sure Dale has refreshments prepared for her before she leaves. Goodbye, my dear. I am sure we will meet again. Me loose. We let you go and we're sure Dale and Ronald are safe. Are you 
satisfied? Yes. Your friend Tong will untie you. A message from the Emperor to Dr. Zarkov. Start walking. Inside. Dale, what is it? Back off quickly. He's been drugged. You mean that devil? Wait. I was given this for you, Doctor, as I left the ship. Dark off. You have no antidote that will revive Dale. Our only chance to live is that you alone bring her to me at once. Delay will be fatal. Think he's telling the truth? Yes, Flash. She's dying. I must take her back to Mains. I'll drop you and Royal at Barron's before I go. She's revived. I'll see what can be done about contriving an escape. All right, Doc. Bye, Doc. a way of getting into Ming's palace without endangering the lives of the princess or in the prisoners. Then once inside with the help of Zarkov and Captain Sue... There's an abandoned tunnel. Not the one we were trapped in before. No, this is on the other side of the palace. It leads into the tombs directly beneath the caverns. That is the way it's clear. If it isn't, we'll clear it. Zarkov's rocket ship is serviced and ready. We are ready, Your Highness. Oh, no, Ron. Numbers won't help us on this trip. Three might succeed where more would fail. You wait for word from us. did well to obey me and bring Dale here, Zarkov. Only I could have awakened her from the death sleep into which I had cast her. I am taking you to my daughter, Princess Zora. And as for you, Zarkov, any attempt to escape will result disastrously both for you and Dale. It's all right, Dale. We're to be the guests of the Emperor for a short time. Come, my dear. Landing, Flash. We're right near the tunnel entrance. I hope Captain Sutton has been able to leave it unguarded. Have you received instructions about preparing the Earth Girl for her wedding, Lady Sonia? Yes, sire. Is it your Majesty's wish that I go to her tonight? No. Tomorrow will be time enough. Finished me. Sorry, Crow, but our mission's a desperate one. What about your companion here? He's one of us. Sudan places her to help you if he came. If you can, get us into the tunnel. Tell us where the princess and Dale Arden are locked up. They're in Ming's private sanctum, the north room. I can guise you there. No, you're taking risk enough. I know the way. Let's have a uniform so we look as if we had an official escort if we meet anyone. All right, Your Highness. Inside, quickly. Right. Wind in the crevice is higher up. Well, it doesn't sound like wind to me. Sounds like. Look. 
ancient dungeons. Come on, we'll have worse than that to face. This leads to the corridors of the North Wing. Crowd had no key for it. a lot of nonsense. We've heard all this before. Ah, Patterson, Patterson. Always the skeptic. Never believe in anything you can't see or feel. There's things to believe in. Yeah. Not always. I'm a practical man. Tall stories aren't in my life. Thank you, brother. I was with Ashby when he died last month. He swore everything he said was true. He says there's a tribe in the depths of the Amazon jungle. They're remnants of the Incas. He says that they have a miracle working juju that can bring the dead back to life. We've heard yarns like that before. Mm -hmm. Well, he got a few bearings, a rough location. He made a map. I've got it. I'm going there. Like to come with me, Colin? Through me? Yeah, interesting adventure. I don't know. I might. When do you want to start? Next week. Oh, that's far too soon. Oh, time enough for an old traveler like you. Telephone for you, doctor, in the hall. Thank you. Well, uh, Think it over and let me know. Have a look at that map. Feel like going? You know, uh, I think I do. I want to be careful, you know. Moran's a strange fellow. One of the most brilliant brains of the century, but there's a family taint. Several of them have been sent away. Yes, so I've heard. But that doesn't worry me. I can look after myself. Besides, there's nothing much wrong with Moran.
looking any better? You don't look it. I'm all right. Don't think a bit of jungle fever is going to bother me, do you? I've had it too often. Sorry. Listen. What is it? The Tom Tom. Look. That's the mound. Still was on Ashby's map. <laughs> Looks as if he was right after all. Fever, all right. Looks as if he's had it. Uh, that, that's something about plant, sacrifice, and miracle. Where'd that little germ come from? Come on, come on. I don't know. I go square. But I want to buy you, brother. I don't know. I go wow. Come on. Got to get him moving somehow. Get him on the stretcher.
to become part of the plant. And from it, I'll get the serum to bring the dead back to life. She won't have died in vain. serum from the plant. Next time it'll work. Next time. Morning, Mum. Sorry to trouble you. Sergeant Bolton. What do you want? Well, now, just a word with the doctor, if you don't mind. He's very busy. That's what we'd all like to be. Still, I won't keep him more than five minutes. He doesn't like being disturbed. Won't I do instead? My instructions is to see the doctor. All right. Come in. Wait here, I'll tell him. Thank you, Mum. He'll see you. Come this way. Sergeant Bolton. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. I don't like being interrupted when I'm working, but... 
If it's important, I suppose it can't be helped. Sit down. I prefer to stand, thank you, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? We've been asked to make inquiries about a young woman named Curtis, Susan Curtis, who's been staying with friends at Cranchurch. Oh, well, what about her? She's disappeared, sir, yesterday evening. Oh? Vanished as if the earth had swallowed her up. Mm. I'm sorry, but can't quite see why well, you have to tell me about it. We had a report she'd been in this neighborhood, and we thought that if she was suffering from loss of memory or something of that sort, she might have called here to ask her way, or for help, maybe. I'm quite sure no woman's been here, but I lost my housekeeper. Perhaps she had her own reasons for disappearing. She told her friends when she went out that she'd be back for dinner at the usual time. Seems to be a sensible enough girl. No troubles of any sort. She didn't know anyone round here. Very strange. Uh, Mrs. Santa, has any young woman been here asking her way or making inquiries? I haven't seen one. Why? Uh, Sergeant Bolton's investigating a disappearance. Uh, sorry, I can't help you, Sergeant. Well, just in case, sir, here's her uh, photograph. Good looker, isn't she, sir? Well, as a scientist, I'm more interested in things with six legs than two. No doubt I'm in a minority. Hope you'll succeed in tracing the young woman. I hope so, sir. Good day. Oh, thank you, Mom. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. That's all right. Good day, Mum. Good day. century, the South Sea Island Bells. This way, this way, ladies and gents, for the human form divine. Straight from the Blue Lagoon, see the tantalizing horrors of Honolulu, over above. Now come along, ladies and gents, this is a wonderful chance. Now step up, ladies and gents, step up. Oh, come on, what's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing like this has ever been seen before. Straight from the Blue Lagoon, all for a bomb. That's better. How about you, sir? You look a bit down in the mouth. We won't tell the wife. <laughs> you, sir. Never mind what the butler saw. Come and take a look for yourself inside. Now step up, ladies and gents. Step up. That's the idea, sir. This way. Never let her wear the trousers, sir. You'll be ready for the rest of your life. <laughs> Have another go. Might do better next time. And that's only a sample, ladies and gentlemen. Now come inside and see the real thing. The show's starting. The show's just starting. Yeah, it. Yeah. Try in your breath when you're fired. Hello, Sally. You catch it if he sees you over here. Oh, I don't care. I'm thirsty. Give me an orange drink. I say, this belongs to you. Me? Yes, you won it. Hey! Now look. No, really, just now at the rifle range. I was looking at you the whole time I was firing. Lucky I didn't kill someone. Go on, take him. He won't bite. Oh, he's rather sweet. I'll have a drink. Orange, please. How's business? Well, not too good for us. We're leaving tomorrow. How oh, are you not going away? Ninety miles away, to Cherokee. Oh, what a shame. I won't see you again. Well, we've been here for a fortnight. You should have come before. Now you tell me. Look, I've got a little place, a garage, not far from here. Near Dunsford, you know it? 
What about letting me run you to Sheraton tomorrow? Oh, I'd love that, but I have to travel with the show. Oi there, Sally! What do you think you're doing there? What do you think you're doing there? Get back up on that stand! What is this? So am I. Oh, just a moment. Pass off. Look, this young lady was having a drink with me. It was my fault. I don't care whose fault it was. Her place is up there on that stand and nowhere else. Go on, you heard me! Just a moment. Now oh, you've done it! Are you all right? It wasn't going to have him talking to you like that. I'm sorry if I've made things difficult for you. You'll make things difficult for yourself if you don't go away. They'll all be around here in a minute. Well, I'll stay and see you're okay. No, thanks just the same, but you'll only make it worse. Please get out. Good night. Good night. Hello. Can I do anything for you? You've done quite enough already, thank you. Have I? It's you. I didn't recognize you upside down. You haven't gone away after all. No, I got the sack. Fired, thanks to you. Did you really? Good. I mean, well, let me take you back. Now, come and sit down. I'll clear these things away. Make yourself comfortable, if you can. Isn't it wonderful? I was thinking of you miles away, and here you are. How'd you get here? I walked and walked and walked. Oh, poor kid. Had any breakfast? Yes, I did, before I left. And what about a cup of coffee? Oh, I'd love one. Coffee coming up. Glad I had this going. I'm sorry about last night. I didn't think you'd get fired. Oh, forget it. I hated the job anyway. I'll soon find something else. Mm, I feel very responsible. Is there anything I can do to help? You can get me some sugar, please. I only came here because, well, I don't know anyone else. Mm, that suits me. No competition. What sort of job are you looking for? Oh, I can do anything. Groom a horse, dig a garden, scrub the floor, wash dishes, and I can dance the hula hula. Mm, very nice, too. The only trouble is that the demand for hula hula dancers has dropped off a bit in this village. The vicar's wife, you know. I've got it. Dr. Moran. Who's he? Oh, he's a scientific fellow. He's quite a big noise around here. I take care of his car for him. Well, why should he give me a job? Well, he's got a housekeeper who does most of the work for him. It's time she had some help. Oh, perhaps she doesn't want any. No harm in trying. How far is it? Nice and near. About a mile. I'd better get going then. OK, I'll run you there in the car. Oh, will you? Thank you. You sure you don't mind? Of course not. Come on. Mom, I'm going out for half an hour. Okay. Down to the right. Want your bag? No, I'd better leave it. I haven't got the job yet. I'll wait here. By the way, he's got a native servant named Tanga. Don't let him frighten you. He's quite harmless. Good luck. Please? Oh. Please? Uh, 
Uh, may I see Dr. Moran? You want master? You come in. I tell him. You come, please. Yes. Come in. What can I do for you? My name's Sally Norton. I'm looking for work. The young man at the garage said that you might have something for me. Oh? Did he say why he thought that? Well, he said you had an old housekeeper who might need some help. She wouldn't thank him for saying that. No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid there's nothing, Miss Norton. Oh. I'm sorry, too. Wait. Would you be prepared to live in? Yes, I don't see why not. Well, uh, let's uh, sit down and talk about it. Well? He's given me a job and to help with the housework and live in. What did I tell you? He's rather a strange person, though. There's a funny look in his eye. Oh, don't let that frighten you. And that native made me jump. I've never been in a house like that before. Well, if you don't like it, you can always leave. Yes, of course. And we'll be seeing each other, I hope. Well, give me my bag. I'll carry it up. Oh, don't bother. I've carried it this far. Another few yards won't make any difference. Thanks, Jack. If you ever need me, Sally. I'll come a-running. See you soon. To engage a girl off the doorstep without knowing who she is or anything about her? But it's been plain for some time that you need help, Margaret. I don't want help. Well, you've been overdoing it lately. It's affected your nerves. You know, you're not very strong, Margaret. It's not overwork that's affecting my nerves. Do you good to have someone young and charming around you. Are you sure you don't mean around you? I wish you wouldn't be so stupidly suspicious, Margaret. Not stupidly, James. I'm not arguing about it. I've engaged her. Her name's Sally Norton. There she is. Be nice to her, Margaret. Margaret. Be nice to her. Very well. Miss Norton? Yes. Come in. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning. sir. Is this the place? Sir. <coughs> Freeman, you better stay here and go over the ground with a tooth comb and see if you can find anything else. Right, sir. Bolton, you come back to the station with me, will you? Right, sir. We'll be back, back later. Sorry. Now, that's the spot we've just seen. Now, there's Colonel Battersby's house, about three miles. That's Sir George Mortimer. And that's Dr. Moran. Hmm. So, Dr. Moran's is nearest? Yes, sir, by about half a mile. Right. Well, let's start with him. Well, I saw him the other day, sir, but he couldn't tell me anything. You didn't search the grounds, did you? No, sir. Better do that at once. If this is really a case of murder, the body might be hidden anywhere around here. Let's get cracking. Well, you might leave word where we're going in case Freeman wants to contact us. Yes, sir. Good morning, miss. This is Inspector Brownlow. Could we see the doctor, please? Yes, will you come in? Thank you. Come in. Yes, what is it? Oh, there's two police officers to see you. 
What, again? They were here last week. Oh, all right, let them come in. Can you come in, please? Thank you. Yes, but not now. I'll tell you about that later. All right, sir. Yes? Oh, sorry to disturb you, Dr. Moran. I'm Detective Inspector Brownlow of the County Police. Well, what is it? It's about that girl who disappeared last week, sir. I've already told Sergeant Bolton I know nothing whatever about it. I know that, sir, but there's been a further development. You see, we have reason to believe the girl was attacked at a spot not far from here. Oh, I see. Well, I still don't see what it's got to do with me. Well, we'd like permission to search your ground, sir. You see, if it's a case of murder, her body might be hidden anywhere around here. Hmm. Yes, well, I suppose there are a couple of sheds where a body might be hidden. Look, anywhere you like. Thank you, sir. Hello? Yes. Uh, it's for you. Someone named Freeman from the police station. Oh, thank you, sir. Hold it a second, Freeman, will you? Sergeant, you might go out and take a look at the sheds, will you? Very good, sir. Yes, Freeman? No, well, I didn't expect you would. No. Right, well, I shall be coming back shortly. Yes, right. Bye. That's interesting, sir. What is? This. Nasty thing to come up against. Pretty sharp. I'll take that if you don't mind. No offense, I hope, sir. <laughs> no. I was just wondering where it came from. Some savage country, I suppose. If it interests you, it's from the upper reaches of the Amazon jungle. And as far as I'm aware, there's no other like it in existence. Really? Well, uh, I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your time, sir. Good day. Good day. Nothing there, sir. Oh, all right. Come on. This our people make live the dead. Master, this is good. Yes, but with our magic, I can improve it. You think so? Remember, I decide. Yes, Master.
if you know me, I'm not really a Christmas person, but like Halloween draws me to scary movies. I am drawn to the movies toward the holiday at this time, you know, that reflect the holiday quote-unquote, I guess, char characteristic or spirit, whatever terminology you want to use. You know, I developed a habit of movies that I watched from the, you know, the horror movie Black Christmas. I would watch it every year during Christmas time. I would watch all the MST3K riffable movies such as Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, you know, or Santa Claus. And then there was the Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. I mean, there are some that are so unwatchable like that Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny is just terrible. It's just, there's a Thumbelina movie inside with a pro-feminist viewpoint and then it goes back to Santa Claus and a uh, commercial for Pirate World or something like that. It's just a terrible movie. But of course there are surprisingly good movies that and when I say surprisingly good you, you think this is going to be bad but it's not. One of these surprisingly good movies is, of course, Ernest Saves Christmas. I love this uh, movie. If I had a family, this is the movie I would let them watch. It just, it is great. It is, it is funny and it's surprisingly good. And one thing is, I should have had been surprised because I had watched something with uh, Jim Varney in it where he had his Ernest character in there in a straight to video release. That was just super good and then you know you get the other Ernest movies and you get the deal with touch tone and of course Disney which he was a great fit for Disney and touch tone and then you get Ernest that saves Christmas or Ernest saves Christmas it has such great uh, comedy in it that is enjoyable for family I mean there is some adult uh, story in it to kind of uh, you know have a sweet message to it and there is some funny parts that adults will find funny and kids will find funny as well it's just a all-around pretty good movie and it's one of those like i said it's surprisingly good of course i'll go into my favorite christmas movie all time is of course it's a wonderful life it is still a classic it's still my favorite guys and this is what i want to talk about today and uh, if you have never seen it's a wonderful life put it in if you have not seen Ernest Saves christmas put it in i promise you will not be disappointed you guys have a wonderful day thank you for subscribing like and sharing for this year and, and of course uh, next month i'm hoping to take a little break and then get back out there with you guys have a wonderful day okay studio microphone intermission monologue starlight monster movie madness studio microphone well hello again monster movie fans how's everyone holding up are we enjoying the jungle madness of the woman eater so far it's got everything a mad scientist, creepy rituals, and a tree with a serious appetite for drama. If you're still with us, I hope you're having as much fun as I am soaking up this B-movie brilliance. Now, while we give the woman eater a quick digestion break, let's shift gears to something a little more seasonal, Christmas. Christmas tree, it's the time for giving, receiving, and sometimes trying not to cringe at the gifts we get. Speaking of which, I've compiled a list of the top 10 worst Christmas gifts to brighten your intermission with a little humor. Here we go. 10. A pack of batteries. Without the toy they're supposed to go in. Seriously, why tease someone like that? 9. A gym membership. Nothing says happy holidays like time to lose weight. 8. A singing fish wall decoration. These were funny for about 5 minutes in the 90s. Now, not so much. 7. Soap on a rope. Because nothing says I care like weirdly inconvenient soap. 6. An ugly Christmas sweater. We get it, it's ironic. But do we have to wear it? 5. A re-gifted fruitcake. The fact that this gets passed around every year makes it a classic, but not in a good way. 4. A self-help book. Um, thanks? I think. 3. Socks. Sure, they're useful, but they're nobody's dream gift. 2. A mug that says, world's okayest person. It's hard to know whether to laugh or cry. And a hashtag one worst Christmas gift? Drum roll, please. Drum. A vacuum cleaner, because nothing screams festive cheer, like chores. What do you think? Have you ever received something worse? Let me know in the comments or shout it out during our next live session. All right, 
That's enough holiday humor for now. Let's head back to the wild and weird jungle to see what's next in the woman eater. Herb, stay tuned. And don't forget, Christmas gifts might be hit or miss, but monster movies are always a win, movie camera. Hello. You're late. So what? What do you mean, so what? I've been waiting here 35 minutes. Don't I get a drink? What do you want? Whiskey. Jimmy, two whiskeys. Give me a whiskey, please. Are you a member, sir? Don't be silly. Give me a whiskey. I don't know what you're making such a fuss about it for. You weren't waiting out on the street. Waiting out on the street? I wouldn't wait out on the street. Not for you or anyone. When you went to the party, I thought you did the skittles. Oh, don't bring that up again. Well, where are we going? What do you mean, where are we going? We're staying here. What, in this joint? You told me we were going out. Yes, we would have done if you'd have been on time. We're too late to go to a show. But if this is your idea of an evening's entertainment, it certainly isn't mine. Now, look, if you'd have been... Oh, coming, why don't you get lost? That suits me. You want a mug. Good night. Hey, you haven't paid for the drinks. You pay for them. Why, the dirty shyster. How about that? You don't pay, you do. Guess again. I call police. Call them. Wait a minute. Can I be of any assistance? No, you can't. How much? Five shillings, please. Thank you. May I join you? It's not much fun drinking alone. Why not? You're playing. Cigarette? Thank you. Well, what's your racket? Talent spotter for the movies. Do I look like one? All men are talent spotters one way or another. Isn't it? Yes, we can't drink this stuff. Let's let's go somewhere else. Where? But my car is parked close by. Let's go to one of those roadhouses. Make an evening of it. Now I know you're a talent spotter. I want to go home. Uh, don't be frightened. What's the matter? You trust me, don't you? Come on. What's the game? Why you brought me here? Get her ready. Margaret, why aren't you in bed? So you come back. Another of your little temporary absences. Did you have a nice time with whoever you were with? Look, I'm not in the mood for a scene. I suppose now I'm only a housekeeper. I have no right to ask questions. None whatever. You leave me in this place for days and nights. There's something wrong in it. I know there is. You're talking nonsense. You're overwrought. Why, why don't you go back to your room? Haven't you even a little bit of feeling left? I've told you a hundred times that all that's over between us. Now, you'd save yourself a lot of pain by accepting it. Ever since you came back from that horrible journey five years ago, you've been different. Yes, you're right, Margaret. I've changed. I believe you're doing something wicked. There's that iron door that I mustn't go through. 
I dream of it. What does it lead to? You know perfectly well it leads to my laboratories. And I allow no one to see my experiments. There was a time when you trusted me. My dear Margaret, I've never trusted you or any other woman with anything I didn't want anyone else to know. There's evil all around me. It's here tonight. I can feel it. Come here, Margaret. For some time I've been thinking it might be better if you went away. You're getting troublesome. I don't like troublesome people. Don't send me away. Let me stay, please. If you ever try to pry into any concern of mine, it'll be the last thing you do. Now, go back to your room. lives compared with what I'm giving to the world. It's turning death into life. Death into life. Sally, didn't expect you so early. Do you mind if I finish this job I'm on? Oh, not a bit. Can I help? Oh, you certainly can. Know anything about cars? Not a thing. Good, I hate mechanically minded women. Now, you see that hole in the scuttle there? I want you to push this wire through, and then I'll grab it from inside, OK? Just a minute. Hmm, looks almost too easy. OK, go on. Go on, pushing. Right, I've got it. Will you, will you pass me the pliers? They're, they're on the ground somewhere. Come on, can't you find them? Oh, they were not on the ground. Oh, it doesn't matter where they were. Let's have them. Let's have that light, will you, so I can see? No, bring it nearer my head. And shine it away from my eyes. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, for the love of Pete, can't you hold that light steady? It's a bit hot here, isn't it? I don't think so. Sally, have... Pass me the screwdriver, will you? How about us getting married? Are you crazy? 
This one? No, 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 not that one, the small one. Why am I crazy? Well, how long have we known each other? Two weeks. I fell for you in two minutes. Out. Oh, for Pete's sake, can't you hold that light steady? Well, I'm doing my best. It's not my fault I don't know anything about cars. Here, take this. And don't pull it tight, if you can just manage that. I don't know why I spent my afternoon off coming to see you. I try to help you and all I get is abuse. Well, I'm going for a walk by myself and you can finish the job on your own. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't pull that. You'll louse up everything. Will I? Good. There's only one thing for it. When we're married, you'll just have to teach me all about cars. You're late. Sorry, Mrs. Santa. Could you please come back at the proper time? I said I was sorry. I heard you. One moment. Margaret, you're tired. Why don't you go to your room and have a little rest? I'm not tired. Sometimes one's tired without knowing it. A little sleep. This girl seems to think she can do what she likes. Perhaps you've told her so. Nothing of the kind. Margaret, do as I say. Go to your room. I'm sorry you were spoken to like that. Oh, that's all right. I'm afraid Mrs. Santa doesn't like me very much. That needn't worry you. Come with me to my study. I want to talk to you. I decided to send Mrs. Santa away. Send her away? Yes, her behavior recently has convinced me she's in need of a long rest. I shall uh, make all the arrangements tomorrow. I shall want you to take her place. Me? Yes. I'm sorry, Dr. Moran, but I can't. Why? Please don't ask me to explain. It's just that I don't feel that I can. But you must have some reason, or is it just that you dislike me? No, of course not. The duties are not very onerous. You have plenty of time to yourself. Yes, I know. And why do you hesitate? Isn't it a reasonably good offer? Of course it is, but... Think it over and let me know tomorrow. Yes. Yes, I will. I'm sure if you think it over carefully, you'll be able to change your mind. I want you to accept. Dr. Moran, please don't think I'm not grateful to you for giving me a job and taking me in as you did. Then why not let that weigh the scales a little? the end. Master. Sally. What's the matter? Oh, Jack. What is it? I've got to leave that place. I can't stay there. You're shaking. You need a drink. Now, come and sit down.
Here you are. Drink that. <coughs> now then, what's this all about? He told me he's sending Mrs. Santa away and wants me to take her place. And I can't stay there alone with him. Oh, I see what you mean. No, it's not just that. He scares me. I saw it all in his eyes when he was talking to me. I've got to leave there tomorrow morning. Mm, tomorrow, nothing. You're leaving tonight. I'll get a room fixed up. Oh, no, I'll be all right till tomorrow. Besides, all my things are there. As long as I'm away before Mrs. Santa leaves. Well, I'll pick you up first thing. No, Jack, I'll come straight here. All right, I'll be waiting. I'd better go now because he doesn't know I've come out. I'll see you tomorrow. I won't go. I'm afraid you've no option. I'm making the arrangements tomorrow. You surely don't think I can't see it all. See what? That you're in love with her. If you can call it love. Oh, I do wish you wouldn't be so absurd. That's why you want me to make way for her. Why will you persist in these middle-aged jealousies? I'm very tired of them. Because I still love you. In spite of the way you've treated me. My dear Margaret, to be brutally frank, to me you're a thing of the past. You know very well I've only kept you on here out of charity. How dare you? My dear Margaret, like many women who were once attractive, you will ignore the passage of time. Well, you can't where men are concerned. <laughs> no. been out. Come in. Mrs. Santos has gone to her room. She's not very well. She doesn't want to be disturbed. Oh, very well, Doctor. I shall be working in my laboratory all evening. I shan't want anything else. this morning? Still not well. Oh, shall I take you anything? No, no, don't. She's uh, asleep. Oh. Uh, Sally. Yes? Have you thought over what I talked about yesterday? Yes, Doctor. Well? I'm sorry, Dr. Moran, but I'm afraid I can't accept your offer. Oh. So you've made up your mind, eh? Yes. I see. In that case, you can leave as soon as you wish. Sorry to inconvenience you, Doctor. Well, that's all right. Thank you. Is that? 
But there's a little matter of salary to be settled. I don't want you to go without that. Well, that, that's all right. I didn't give you proper notice after all. Oh, I insist. I have it ready for you. Come and get it. Did you really think you were going to get away as easily as that? What do you mean? Surely you can't be in such a tremendous hurry. Sit down for a minute. No. One might almost think you were frightened of me. Sit down. Now, what are you rushing off for in this extraordinary fashion? Surely I'm free to go if I want to. Yes, but why do you want to? One reason is, I'm getting married. Getting married? Who to? That's my business. And mine? Who is it? If you must know, it's Jack Venner. Venner? Don't be ridiculous. I'm going to marry Jack Venner. You're not. Oh, I won't listen to any more of this. I'm going. Sally, listen to me. I love you. I loved you the first time I ever saw you. I know I'm much older than you, but it's happened many times before. That's why I took you in. And that's why you're not going to leave this house. You can't stop me. No doubt you've heard of men who give their lives to bring something to the world. Well, that's what I've done. I'm going to be acclaimed as the greatest man on earth. And you're going to share that greatness with me. You must have often wondered what's behind that iron door. I'm going to show you. Come here. Inspector Brownlow? No, Brownlow. I've got any information you wanted. You mean you heard from Rio? Well? Moran has been in a party in the Amazon country. So Moran was there. And there was a man called Collins. And Collins was killed. Yes. He went to find something in the plant. An ice of some sort. A plant? Sort of a plant. Well, according to legend, they were killing women. <laughs> That's hardly believable. Well, that's what they say. There's some reason for it being true. Well. Well, thanks for the information anyway. That's all right. That's going to be enough help. Mm -hmm. There you go. Bye. Uh, I've just heard from Sergeant Bolton, sir. Mm -hmm. They found a torn up bit of material corresponding to the dress the girl was wearing in a hedge about 50 yards from where she was attacked, in a direct line with Moran's house. What? It looks as if she must have been dragged or carried along that line. I've had an interesting piece of news, too. Get the car. We're going there. Right, sir. In the laboratories of Cranfield. Afternoon, Bolton. Let's see this bit of material you found. Here it is, sir. Hmm. Are you sure it was from the dress she was wearing? No doubt about it, sir. The people she stayed with at Cranchurch identified it at once. Good enough. Now I want to see where you found it. Dr. Moran, can I have a word with you? Certainly. Come inside. I've come for Sally. Sally? She isn't here. She left this morning. Left? Yes. She said she wanted to get away early, so I let her go. Must have been about 11 o'clock. But she arranged to come straight to me. Didn't she? No, I've been waiting all afternoon. She wouldn't have gone away without seeing me first. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that she left this morning. I don't believe you, Dr. Moran. I don't believe Sally's left this house. What do you mean? I believe she's still here and I want to see her right now or I'm going to the police. You must be crazy to come here and talk to me like this. Well, which do I do? You get out. If you want to go to the police, go. They'll only laugh at you. I don't think so. I have nothing more to say to you. Good evening. Sally was scared, Dr. Moran. She was sure there were strange things happening in this house. It might be a good thing if those ideas were looked into. Why 
told you not to be in here. I'm frightened. Away up in the Amazon jungle, there are people who put their hands into the mouth of death and snatch its victims back. I learned their secret. I told you. The world will ring with my name. The man who can bring back the dead. You're mad. You think so? I'm going to show you. I'm putting it to the real test. Come with me. No. No. You'll see something that no one in the whole civilized world has seen before. I'm going to share my triumph. It'll be the greatest moment of my life. You mustn't be frightened, Sally. If you don't, come on. All right. All right. Good. Good. Take my object in bringing you here. Oh, Where's Sergeant Bolton? I'm afraid he's not here, sir. Can I help you? Oh, it's very urgent. Do you know where I can find him? He's out with Inspector Brown now on the Cranchurch Road near Knott's Lane. You might get him there. Oh, thanks. to me.
Only the body. No brain. The brain for us only. Still dead. Only the body. No mind. Margaret. Oh, they cheated me. They cheated me. Open up. You come. I take you. Go on, open up, will you? Inspector! I think we can get in here. Go! Go ahead. You've destroyed me. Sparkles, thank you for watching Starlight Monster Movie Madness. Sparkles Movie Camera. Well, Monster Movie fans, that wraps up tonight's wild and wacky adventure with The Woman Eater, 1957. From mad science to a tree with a taste for terror, this film has truly been a feast for fans of classic B-movie madness. Or er, popcorn. We hope you had as much fun watching as we did presenting it. Your support means the world to us. And we'd love to keep bringing you more retro thrills, chills, and sci-fi spills. If you enjoyed tonight's show, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss a moment of the monster movie magic. And while you're here, drop us a comment below. What did you think of The Woman Eater? Do you have a favorite classic creature feature you'd like us to showcase? We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for tuning in to Starlight Monster Movie Madness, where the retro vibes are alive and the monsters never sleep. Until next time, keep the popcorn popping and the screens glowing. Clapperboard Alien Monster.